All right, guys. So welcome. Once again, this is going to be my first shot at uh, using uh, PowerPoint to show you guys a lesson. Like, so, you know, in some instances when I really have to get down um, into some of the nitty gritty, I think sometimes when we're doing it on Zoom, it can be a little bit less uh, orientating. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this on your guys' teams and then you guys can take a look at it. And then um, if you guys have any questions, we'll do like a, um, a meeting or something like that. And then we can ask questions based off the PowerPoint if you guys have any explanation or any um, further questions. All right, so let's jump right into it. So what we're gonna discuss today is how to properly calculate limiting reagents and reactants. Um, the term limiting reagents and the term limiting reactants are oftentimes used interchangeably. Either one is correct. Um, even I go back and forth, but most of the time I say limiting reactants because realistically that's what we're dealing with, right? We're trying to figure out how much product can be produced um, uh, by first figuring out uh, which of these um, uh, is going to be the one that runs out first. So by definition, the limiting reactant is going to be the reactant that runs out first. All right. So in order for us to do this, there's a couple of steps involved in this, but I'm just going to kind of show you guys how to do it uh, the way I've, I've always ever uh, I've done it. Okay. So I know I've told you guys before in the past that I typically look at the coefficients and look at which of the two are the are the largest coefficient. And I know that right off the bat is going to be the limiting reactant. Now that has worked for me about 75% of the time. Although I will say that it's not 100% uh, sure, as I'll, I'll show you in one of these other examples here in just a little bit. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read this problem. Let me see if I can figure out. I think one of these has like a laser pointer. Um, anyways, I'll just use the pen so you guys can see. All right, so the reaction that they give us right now, right, is that we have magnesium oxide, right, reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid and produces one mole of magnesium chloride and two moles of water, right? So in the problem, it tells us we have a 50.6 gram sample of magnesium hydroxide, and it's reacted with 45 grams of hydrochloric acid, according to the reaction. Now, what I wanna know is how much magnesium chloride is going to be produced, right, based off the mass of the two products. Now, once again, so they're giving us two masses. Obviously, one of those, well, not obviously, but one of those may be a limiting reaction. So in other words, one of them is gonna be in excess, all right? Um, we have to figure out which one we're going to do because if we if we calculate the amount of magnesium chloride using the excess reactant, then we're gonna we're gonna predict much more than actually will be made. Okay, so we need to figure out which of those two is the limiting rate. All right. Now, so the first thing I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to convert all my masses to moles. That's the first thing I'm going to do right off the bat. So I'm going to get my 50.6 grams of magnesium hydroxide. And I'm going to convert that to moles, all right? So once again, my conversion factor here is going to be molar mass, right? So I have one mole of magnesium hydroxide, right? And the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide is 59.6 59.31. Oh, if I can change the width of my pen. Oh, I guess not. Okay, whatever. All right, 59.31 grams of magnesium hydroxide. Trust me, it's there. I just don't want to take up too much space. Just know that it is grams of magnesium hydroxide. So when I multiply this all out and I get my calculator, right? Get my handy-dandy calculator. I realize that I have about 0 0.85 three moles of magnesium hydroxide. Okay? Now, I'm going to do the same thing for my other reactant, which in this case is hydrochloric acid. So I have 45.0 grams of hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to convert this over to moles as well. Okay? All right. So I have the molar mass for hydrochloric acid is 36.461 grams for every one mole of hydrochloric acid. Okay, grams cancel out, and I'm left with 1.23 mole, right, of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so now that I got that, I know exactly how many moles of each substance are added to the reactant. All right, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the next step. Now that I have the moles, I'm going to go to figure out which of these is the limiting reactant. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and kind of put these off to the side so I remember. So I'm going to put it up here. 0 0.853 mole of magnesium hydroxide, right? And 1.23 mole of hydrochloric acid, all right? Okay, I'm going to erase the rest of this stuff. If my eraser works, which it doesn't, so I'll do it like this. Hey, listen, this is my first time trying to vlog. All right, so forgive me. I don't have a radio voice just yet. I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos so that way I can get better at it. Just for you guys. Okay, so let's do the reaction. So I'll write this down over here. I want to write down my reaction, which is magnesium hydroxide. It's going to react with two moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay. And it's going to produce, ugh, gross arrow. It's going to produce one mole of magnesium chloride. This is important. You need to have your coefficients. Okay. That's going to be very important. And two moles of water. Even though we're really not predicting how much water is going to be produced, um, we still need to have a completely balanced chemical equation. All right. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if my chemical equation is actually balanced, right? And my chemical equation is actually balanced. And it looks like it is, right? So I have it all balanced out. Just trust me. I know that it's balanced. But it's important that you make sure that it is balanced before you start, okay? And you'll realize why in just a second. Okay, so now I'm going to start the process into figuring out which of these two reactants is actually my limiting reactant, all right? So I'm going to start with magnesium hydroxide. Now, magnesium hydroxide, according to my calculations earlier, oh, I want to use red. Let's try that again. I'm going to do them in different colors so you guys can see. So magnesium hydroxide, right, I'm using approximately, right, 8, over here I, I kind of wrote it down, 8, 0 0.85, that, 8, 0 0.853 moles of that stuff, okay? All right, I'm not going to write down moles because I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to erase that real fast. But just know that that's how much, how many moles of magnesium hydroxide I use for this reaction. Now, if I use 8.53 moles, right, if magnesium hydroxide is the limiting reactant, then I know that that one's going to run out first, okay? So for this next part, I'm going to do the same thing, right? But this time I'm going to use the hydrochloric acid, Okay. Except now I'm going to multiply the amount of moles of hydrochloric acid that I actually use, right? So in this case, it's two. So the ratio is two to one. Now, if you guys remember, I'm kind of doing stoichiometry on the paper without using dimensional analysis, even though I really am. And the ratio that I'm using here is my molar ratio. So for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide that I use, I'm actually using two moles of hydrochloric acid. So I take the two and I multiply it by the amount of moles of magnesium hydroxide that I use, if that is the limiting reactant. So that's zero. 0.853, okay? And I multiply that by two. When I multiply that by two, I get 1.706 moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, now, let's take a look at this real fast before we even start. Can anyone see a problem with the amount of moles that I just got right now? If you look at the amount of moles that we got for hydrochloric acid, it's 1.23. Well, if I were to use all of the magnesium hydroxide, right, 0 0.853, right, my theoretical yield for hydrochloric acid would be 1.706 using stoichiometry, okay? But there's a problem with this, right? If you guys notice, there is more moles produced than I actually have. So right off the bat, you know, without even doing the other part, the hydrochloric acid is probably going to be my limiting reactant because it, it already ran out. Too much hydrochloric acid was produced, right, using the amount of moles of magnesium hydroxide. All right. So we're still going to go through the motion just so you can kind of see that it actually is the case. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to go ahead and predict. Well, you know what? We're going to do the hydrochloric acid part first, okay, because this is where it gets a little bit more in depth. So I'm going to use purple for this part. All right, so now we're going to do it for hydrochloric acid.
Now for hydrochloric acid, right, we use approximately 1.23 moles of it, okay? Now over here with magnesium hydroxide, understand that we're using molar ratio. And as we discussed before, for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide, we're using two moles of hydrochloric acid. Well, that also works the other way, which means we're using a fraction, right, of the amount of moles. So in this case, for every two moles of hydrochloric acid we're using, we're using one mole of hyd magnesium hydroxide. So that's a one to two ratio. Or multiply this by one half. Once again, this is just molar ratio, okay? When I multiply that by a half, I get 0 0.5. 6, 1, 5. Now, let's take a look at the amount of moles of magnesium hydroxide that we used at the beginning of this reaction. Notice that it's 0 0.853. Well, listen, we know how to compare and contrast things, right? So we know that 0, 6, 0 0.615 is less than 0 0.853. So we still have some left over. In other words, we have excess now, okay? Once again, we re-verified that hydrochloric acid is probably going to be our limiting reactant. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to predict, I'm going to predict the number of moles for each of those. Okay. So let's do over here for magnesium chloride using the molar, uh, the amount of moles for magnesium oxide, hydroxide, sorry. All right. So I'm going to use green here and notice that it's a one to one ratio, right? So if it's a one to one ratio, I just multiply it by one and it's still going to be zero point eight five three moles right of magnesium chloride now the problem wants to know is how much what's the mass of magnesium chloride that's produced so now i use uh simple stoichiometry uh by use of dimensional analysis um and i use my molar ratio or sorry not my molar ratio but my molar mass once again now understand that before i did this right here in this part right here right there's actually um, some behind the scenes stoichiometry or dimensional analysis happening, but I'm just doing it on the paper and I'm doing the molar ratio, all right, for that. But now I'm gonna jump in and convert this amount of moles into grams of magnesium chloride. And if you guys remember correctly, it's gonna feel like Dora here for just a second. What is the, what is the conversion factor that we use to convert moles to grams? You're right, it is. It is molar mass, very good. Okay, so now I felt really stupid. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so now I'm going to convert moles of magnesium chloride to grams of magnesium chloride. All right, I'm going to put moles on bottom and find the molar mass of magnesium chloride, right, which I found earlier because I didn't want to sit here and do this over and over again. But I know that it's 95. Now, you can go back and verify this for me, all right, but I'm fairly certain that it's 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride, okay? All right, now, now that I've done that, right, if you'd like to, you can kind of follow along with your calculator. I'm gonna get my calculator out, right? Um, TI actually just announced that they're offering free downloads, um, free downloads for uh, for six months on some of their calculators. So if you wanna put your calculator on, well, the other thing I don't know about you guys putting them on your guys' student devices, they'll let you, I think you need to have permissions to do that. But if you have like an iPad or a personal computer that you use, I would definitely recommend like, I mean, they're offering you guys access to like graphing calculators and all that stuff, which I think is pretty neat. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna multiply it to figure out what I get. And when I do that, right, I realize that my theoretical yield, if I use 0 0.853 moles or 50.6 uh, 50 grams of magnesium hydroxide, theoretically, I should be able to produce 82 or 81.5 Two, one grams of magnesium chloride. I'll put that down because I'm running out of space. Okay. All right. Now, if I do it to this side, if I do it using the 0 0.853, then I also have to do it for the uh, hydrochloric acid. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Use a different color this time. This time I'll use blue. Why not? Let me use orange instead. I like orange. All right. So once again. I'm going to use back to, uh, behind the scenes dimensional analysis and use the molar ratio. I know for every one mole of magnesium chloride that I use, I use two moles of hydrochloric acid. So once again, that's one half. My molar ratio is one half. Multiply that by one half, right? 
and one half of 1.23, 1.23, right? The amount of moles of hydrochloric acid that I use. So I multiply that by 1.23 and I get 0 0.615 moles of magnesium chloride. Now, once again, I want to know the mass. So I'm going to convert the amount of moles of magnesium chloride and convert it to grams. And like I said before, the molar ratio that we're going to use, or excuse me, the, the conversion factor that we're going to use for our dimensional analysis is going to be molar mass. All right, so I'm going to use my molar mass, which once again, I did down here. So for every one mole of magnesium chloride, I have 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride. Moles of magnesium chloride cancel out. And I get a grand total of, once I put it in my handy dandy calculator, I get 58.6 grams of magnesium chloride. Okay. Now, now that I just got a remind message. Hey, Thomas, did you guys, did you check your Google Classroom? You should probably go check it, dude. Uh, Mr. Nestle sent another message out. Sorry, guys. I had to tell my son that food. Everyone's doing distance learning right now, so my son has to check his stuff. All right. So, anyway. So now that I figured out the amount of magnesium chloride, I predicted the theoretical yield that I should get, right? Well, in this case, it's 58.6. Now, the whole reason for me doing both of these, right, is I wanted you guys to see the difference. Had I used uh, magnesium hydroxide as my limiting reactant, I would have predicted that it would have been, I would have produced 81.21. My theoretical yield for magnesium chloride would have been 81.21, right? We've already established that magnesium hydroxide is not my limiting reactant. So therefore, this is in an accurate prediction. It's, pre it's predicting I would produce way too much, right? However, if I use the correct amount, which in this case is the, I, I predict that uh, hydrochloric acid is going to be my limiting reactant, I predicted that it's gonna produce 58.6 grams of magnesium chloride. That is the accurate theoretical yield for the amount of magnesium chloride that will be produced if I use 1.23 moles, or in this case, 45.0 grams of hydrochloric acid. And the reason that I know that is because I've figured out that hydrochloric acid is in fact my limiting reactant. In other words, it is gonna be the reactant that runs out first, okay? It is the reactant that runs out first. And the reason that I know that is because when I originally did this, I realized that if I use 0.853, moles, or in this case, 50.6 grams of magnesium hydroxide, right, that the amount of hydrochloric acid that would be needed would be about 1.706 moles, which is more than I actually use, okay? All right, so anyway, so that's how you do one of these limiting reactant problems. Um, I'll put a couple for you guys so you guys can practice, or I'll, you know what I'll do is I'll make another video for you guys in just a minute, and I'll show you what it looks like when um, you have one where it isn't as easy as you know seeing the amount of uh, picking the one with the largest coefficient all right um hopefully this helps a little bit uh just real quick to restate it the way it goes is that you would say that when i use uh 1.3 uh, 1.23 or i'h oh, sorry i'll say that again when i use 45.0 grams of hydrochloric acid um, the amount of magnesium chloride that is predicted is 58.0 58.6 grams of magnesium chloride uh, magnesium hydroxide would be in excess. And if I wanted you guys to figure out the amount of excess that would be, you would simply just take um, uh, the 0 0.615 moles, right? To convert that into grams to subtract it from the original um, mass that you got, which is the 50.6. And then you know exactly how much excess uh, magnesium hydroxide that we use. All right, guys, like I said, hopefully that helps. I'll put another video shortly. All right, guys.